Welcome to Troubleshooting View Display Problems in Revit Products. My name is Harlan Brum. I'm the Global Technical Lead for Revit Architecture with Autodesk Product Support. In this class, we'll help you to understand the view display system in Revit Products, how it impacts the visibility of objects and drawings, and we'll teach you the top tips and tricks to quickly resolve view display issues. When learning to troubleshoot a view display issue in the Revit products, it is important to understand the view display system. First, it's important to understand the object styles dialog, visibility and graphics, and also the materials dialog. There are many components that make up the view display system in Revit, and having an understanding of that system is critical to understanding how to troubleshoot these types of issues. The view display system in Revit is complex and contains many parts. The instance properties of the view is the primary location where this information can be accessed. However, instance properties is only your window into all the properties that are available in order to control the display of objects in a particular view. Starting at the left hand side, we have visibility and graphics. Moving down the phase filters to the right, we have the discipline setting and the bottom right, the view range. All these settings can control how a view displays within a Revit product. In order to fully understand Revit's view display system, you first need to understand the organizational structure of the application. At the highest level, Revit organizes data by the category of the object. Categories could include walls, windows, doors, electri electrical fixtures, lighting fixtures, or structural columns. Each category can have its own level of display within a project. The category level displays includes view specific and globally throughout the entire project. The second level of Revit's organizational structure is the family. Individual families can have their own display settings within a Revit project. The third level is the type. A family's type can be controlled as well. And last, we have the instance of the object. Within Revit products, you can control the visibility of an object based on its instance. Next, you can start to understand the view display system in a Revit product. There are a number of areas within a Revit product that control the visibility of different objects within a view. Starting it with object styles, object styles controls the visibility of objects from a global perspective, allowing you to change the cut, projection, line weights of any category within Revit and have it be applied across the entire project. View properties allows you to change the specific settings of a view to control how objects will display. Items included in the view properties includes vis visibility and graphic overrides for controlling the categories within a specific view, separate from object styles. The view range, which allows you to control the cut and top and bottom range, including the view depth setting, the discipline of the view, and also view filters. We also have the materials dialog and phases. All of these settings 
can be used to control the visibility of objects within a Revit project. Let's take a look at how these different dialogues and locations can affect the visibility of an object or project within a Revit product. Let's take a look at the features of the view display system within Revit Architecture 2011. First, let's look at object styles. Under the Manage tab, you can click Object Styles to open the dialog. Object Styles controls the visibility of objects within the entire project. It allows you to look at the category of the object and control its line weight in projection or in cut if it's available, its line color, the line pattern, and a material. After Object Styles, we have the View Properties of the View. Using 2011, we now have the Properties palette where you can view the properties of any view simply by going to that view and having the palette available. Within View Properties, we have Visibility and Graphic Overrides. Visibility and Graphic Overrides allow you con to control individual categories and override object style settings for the projection lines, patterns, and the cut, whether or not the object is half-toned, the transparency of that object and its detail level. Also, we have view property within view properties, we have view range. We can edit the view range and we can control the top, the cut plane and the bottom of the view. In order for most objects to display within a Revit view, it needs to exist between the top and bottom of the cut plane. The view depth setting allows you to display objects that are below a certain level or hole. An example of this would be an atrium space. So you could display what's at the bottom of the atrium or in reflected ceiling plans above this, that level that you're looking at. So you could look at the glass ceiling, for example, of that atrium space. Within view properties, we also have the Discipline setting. The Discipline setting is hard-coded in Revit with architectural, structure, mechanical, electrical, or coordination. The coordination discipline allows visibility and graphics to override the hard-coded setting. All objects will display the same using the coordination discipline. So this is a good workaround when you suspect a discipline-related problem. Again, certain objects will display certain ways in structural or mechanical views. These settings cannot be modified. The only way to correct the issue is to switch to a coordination discipline. Finally, if we go back to visibility and graphics, we have view filters. View filters allow you to, to change the display of objects based on a specific parameter that you've decided to use. You can create new filters duplicate a filter, choose the category of objects to apply the filter to, like walls, and then choose the parameter you want to filter by, like cost, and set the cost to equal 100. In this example, we can click OK, add that filter to the view, and now we can control the line weight and the cut weight, whether or not the object is half tone or transparent, if it meets that criteria. And we can also turn on and off views. This is very handy for uh, MEP specific projects um, in order to display pipes and ductworks for different systems uh, with different colors or different line weights. Another aspect that controls the visibility of objects is materials. Also on the Manage tab, the Materials dialog has been changed considerably for 2011. The first portion of the dialog remains pretty consistent, allowing you to choose a surface pattern, a cut pattern, and the render shaded appearance. We also have render appearance. This is the new piece for 2011 with additional settings available to control how the object renders. Last but not least, we have phases. <clears throat> also under the Manage tab, the Phases dialog allows you to control settings pertaining to time and how the building is to be constructed. 
phase filters control the, the way objects display based on their status. There are only four available statuses within a Revit project, new, existing, moshed, and temporary. The status is determined by the properties of the view and the properties of the object. There are four, sorry, three available overrides you can choose from. By category, meaning we'll use object styles or visibility and graphics to display how the object displays. Overridden, which uses the graphic overrides tab in the phasing dialog, or not displayed to make the object be hidden within that view. Graphic overrides for phases are project specific and cannot be overridden for an individual view. These settings apply across all views, so it's something to keep in mind when you have a project that's utilizing different phases. Let's talk about some tips and tricks for solving view display problems. First, cut and paste the same place. Using the clipboard, you can cut an object from the Revit model and then paste a line in the same place to paste the geometry back into the model into the same location. This can refresh the dependencies within the Revit file and clean up any issues that may have occurred. It's a great trick for working with wall cleanups and other geometry that doesn't appear correctly inside of the Revit project. Applying view templates is a great tool for troubleshooting a Revit display problem. The apply view templates command within Revit allow you to include or not include any view property setting that you wish within a specific view. There are a number of default templates available to use, but What's great about this tool is that you can troubleshoot individual areas of the model quickly and easily in order to pinpoint the exact cause of the problem. A common issue that occurs with section heads and elevation marks is that they don't appear in certain views. This is often linked to a parameter that's actually on the section head or the elevation mark. This parameter is called hide at scales coarser than. This setting hides section heads and section marks at certain scales. In order to troubleshoot this problem, you can set the scale of the view closer to one to one. If the section head or mark appears on the screen, click on it and go to its instance properties. Then change the hide at scales coarser than value to be smaller than the scale you're dealing with. Another great troubleshooting tool is the Reveal Hidden Elements button located on the view control bar. It's the little light bulb at the end of the view control bar. This allows you to activate what we call Superman X-ray vision. This places a magenta border around the screen and highlights any hidden objects or elements within the model including any categories that may be turned off in a magenta color. Finally, pay special attention to underlays. It's important to understand the definition of an underlay. The underlay setting specifies a level. That level and the next highest level in the project determine an underlay's range. Any element that overlaps the underlay range will be displayed as the underlay. If you want to restrict the underlay range, create another level between the underlay level and the next level up, and then set the underlay to none, and then set it back to the original level. It will now use the newly created level as the top of the underlay range. In summary, in this class, we talked about the view display system in Revit products, how it impacts the visibility of objects and views, and the top tips and tricks for troubleshooting view display problems. I hope you enjoyed the session, and thanks for attending.